Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back. It's your boy Skylar. And today we got 15 NBA legends who were terrified of Larry Bird. All right, as usual, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoy. And yeah, let's get it. But Larry Bird was cold. Mm -hmm. I don't think nobody ever could get out with him. He talked trash uh, against us. Talked trash with every uh, against everyone else. And I'm looking at this guy like <laughs> he's nuts, you know. When you talk about NBA players that will put fear in other players, the first people that will come to your mind will MJ. be somebody like Jordan, Shaq, Kobe, or maybe Kevin Garnett. But I feel like there's one guy that should be on everybody's top five when talking about the most feared NBA players, and that is Larry Bird. Fact. Like the tra and to be honest. That that is so disrespectful, bro. The fact that people don't talk about Larry Bird as often and they talk about the other legend is so disrespectful. Like, bro, Larry Bird was a different breed, bro. He doesn't get enough credit, bro. He's so, like, come on, man. We can't do Larry Bird like this. Come on. Trash talking he was having with other players was just disrespectful at an all-time high, but at the same time hilarious and creative. Seriously, I will crack up laughing at the way Bird will make players and even legends look like fools. The fear Bird instilled in players' hearts night after night made him a formidable Ooh. opponent for defenders and even coaches. Larry would literally tell defenders what he would do on the court and proceed to do it. It was exhausting playing Bird every night because they would be in a physical and mental battle they had never seen seen before so i found 15 nba legends god. sharing stories about oh my god a battle they had never seen before so i found 15 nba legends sharing stories about what made larry bird so feared by many players and when these legends are talking you get to see the amount of respect they have for him so we will start with number 15 david robinson aka the admiral who left an indelible mark on the nba with his extraordinary skills and contributions to the game there is rarely any footage of david robinson talking about larry bird but there is an interview a year ago when someone asked him who was his favorite player to play against and this is what he said and I know a lot of you young folks may not really remember Larry Bird that well, but that man was a magician. And yeah, yep. no, he was amazing. And uh, he was 6'9", and he had the skill set of, of, of a guard. He wasn't that fast. He Bro, if it wasn't for me doing reaction videos, right, I would never know about any of this stuff about Larry Bird. Once I saw, like, the whole... I'm gonna even like it. Maybe at the end of this video, the ultimate Larry Bird mixtape, bro. After seeing that, I'm like, wait, what? So then I start doing more reaction of him, and the more I get to learn, and I'm like, holy hell! Like, yeah, he was definitely a problem in the lead back then. He wasn't that great of an athlete, but he jump. had the heart of a lion, mm -hmm. and um, and so playing against him was kind of my real first taste of man. That's I, I want to do that, right? I want to compete against that every day. That's the kind of thing that's going to make you a monster. And there were a lot of great players. I mean, make no mistake, I faced a lot of great players every day. But mm -hmm. I think when I came into the league, Larry Bird was at his peak. And he was, he was incredible at what he did. And, um, and he was humble. And he, he came to work <laughs> every single day. And I, I, to be honest, I don't know about humble. The way how he be talking, all reckless. I don't know about humble. I, I don't know if I could agree with that, but I don't know about humble. But yeah, let's get it. <laughs> admired that, and so I think he was my, he was my favorite to play against, particularly early in my career. Number 14, we got Gary Payton, one of the most well-known trash talkers in NBA history, who had intimidated many players in his Ooh. career. But it is shocking how highly he speaks of Bird after all the battles that he went through against Jordan. He will still pick Larry Bird when it comes to getting into your head. This man was a trash-talking connoisseur, but the way Larry Bird was talking trash was something he never experienced. And Larry Bird was shooting anywhere. If you think about how many times he won a championship and what he was doing and what he was averaging, People don't understand. They was like, oh, he was slow. He wasn't, a, nah, he was just smart. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He was smart and he can get it. He can get it done. He wasn't MVP all the times and all the all-stars all them times for nothing. I'm gonna take you over to this corner. I'm gonna dribble two times. I'm gonna hit your ass in the face and it, and it bet not touch the rim. Wow. And just like that. And the thing is, what makes Larry Bird different too, he don't talk trash while like raging. You know, like guys like talk trash, like they're mad. They're like, rr, rr, rr. no, he'll just casually be like, listen, this is what's going to happen. Boom, bop, 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 score. And there's nothing to do about it. <laughs> just casually. And that was kind of like, that's part of it too. 
and for the mind game it was like yeah you can't then he uh, said if it do i'm gonna come right back and do it again until it touch it that's how larry bird used to damn do. wow that's crazy yeah larry bird was the coldest shit talker ever man and he bag it up because he was so cold. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? So people ask people about him. Motherfucker used to tell you, boy, a problem you with me. I'm too motherfucking good for this. Why? I'm gonna give you a Christmas present. This jumper in your face. Uh, he's <laughs> always say this, man. Next, we got Dominic Wilkins, the human mm. highlight film. He was a dominant force on the court, captivating audiences with his electrifying dunks and scoring Ooh. prowess. He had a versatile offensive game, capable of scoring from various positions on the floor. In the 1980s, Wilkins and Larry Bird had a fierce rivalry. They had one of the most memorable playoff battles in NBA history. Dominic Wilkins shared his experience of what it was like going against Larry Bird as a rookie, and this was hilarious. First time Bird ever talked trash to me. It was my rookie season, my first game I ever played against him. And so I go shake his hand and he put both hands behind his back. And I'm saying, okay, you know, he's getting he getting his head ready to play. And uh first play of the game, he says, I don't know where they got you guarding me, Holmes. And he shoots a three. <laughs> Holmes. Now I wasn't upset he made the three. I said, but this son of a gun just Come called on, me. Holmes. <laughs> I was pissed. <laughs> you know, I said, I wasn't mad he hit the three, but did this some bitch just called me Holmes? That ass, how's it like? And so it's set up what? for a really uh, interesting game. Cause I remember one time I came down and I, and I dunked it on him. He laying on the ground, he fouled me and I'm pointing. And he said, hey, Rook. I said, what? He said, what? You? He said, I like you, you you got, you know, he said, you got balls, but I'm still gonna get 30 on your ass, <laughs> you know? He mm. got about 38, but I had to pay my dues. I wasn't upset about that because, you know, back Damn, then, 38? you know, as a rookie, you know, you got to pay your dues. Simple as that. He backed up whatever he said. If he tell you you're going to hit a shot to a certain place or if he's going to take you down to the post, turn around, hit a fadeaway J, he going to do just that and ain't nothing you can do about it. Joe Dumars, a Cap. Pistons legend who many call the Jordan. Not on me. I tell you, bro, if I was in the NBA, bro, is no way somebody going to talk shit and then score about 30 40 points on me there's no way that's gonna happen i don't care who you is bro that's not gonna happen I, bro i'll be hot ain't no way <laughs> and stopper you know a key member of the detroit pistons bad boys era he holds deep respect for larry bird the intense rivalry between the pistons and the boston celtics during the late 1980s was marked by fierce competition and Damn. mutual admiration you will see joe dumars explain how smart and tough larry bird was playing against like it was a chess match i said but please let's not forget how incredible bird and the celtics were in their prime i said they were almost impossible to go in there and beat and they said, why? I said, because you could not make a mistake with them. If you turn Yeah, that's why. Didn't the Celtics was whooping MJ ass, bro, until it started to get old and then Scotty came in and, like, helped him out the first round and whatnot? Like, then what happened? Bro, Larry Bird was a problem, bro. Turn your head or you don't rotate right on time or whatever it was. Those guys made you play, and it was him. Like, he was like, a, he was a savant on the court. Like, just a savant. Like, two plays ahead on everything. And so... Um, I, I was just talking about this uh, maybe three or four days ago, how hard it was to go into Boston and be the team when Bird is in his prime. Dennis Rodman, a Hall of Fame his NBA IQ player, just high. Known for his rebounding and defensive prowess, had so many battles against Bird when he was on the Bad Boy Pistons. And even though he said some crazy statements about Bird, like saying he wouldn't be able to play in today's NBA, he still had respect for Bird's game when going against him. He actually had a funny welcome to the league moment with Larry Bird in the playoffs. Oh, really? Check it out. Oh, uh, um, I think it was 80, 86, 87. So I, we were playing Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. So they gave me the task of guarding Larry Bird. <laughs> so it's oh boy. Guarding Larry Bird. I'm like this 25 year rookie yeah. in the league. They said, Dennis, you have to guard him. You was, like, was a what? 25 year old rookie? 25 year old rookie. Yeah. That shit, that don't happen no these days, do it? 25 year old? Damn, unless maybe if you come over from overseas, but 25 year old rookie. They said, Dennis, you have to guard him. And I'm like, man, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> guard him. So I, that, that was my whole job to guard the toughest guy on our team, on, on the other teams. So, you know, so I'm guarding him. And every time I turn my head, he's over there in the three point line. He said, I'm over here, Rook. I'm like, <laughs> 
I'm, you know, I got to go out there and run out there like a dumb dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go out there and try to contest him. They hit the three. I'm like, okay. Da, 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 da. Next, we got two legends, Carl Malone and Isaiah Thomas, who played against Larry Bird for almost all of their career and had intense playoff matchups. They shared their stories of how Bird used to talk trash during clutch moments. I remember sitting on the bench watching Kevin McHale and Larry Bird, and Larry Bird did something. To me, I'm still marveled at this, and he got so many people. It was a timeout, and one of our teammates, Bart Kofold, had a camera. Right. He's taking pictures. So Larry Bird came over there and looked at our bench, <laughs> and he said, uh, three-pointer from right over here. <laughs> so I'm Crazy. Bay Root. Bay Root. Bay Root. So I say, I'm sitting there looking. He looked down at the floor. Hell, everybody looked down at the floor. He like, like he threw something. He hit a three. Oh, Damn. And Cold. I remember Kevin kind of looking over at the bench like this is going to be a long night. We walk out on the court. And, and, and he said, who guarded me? Man, was that Larry's a punch? always called me cheesy, right? He's like, Cheesy, who guard me? And I was like, you know, I got Kelly, I got Lamb, I got I got Benson. He's like, Ooh. you ain't got no brothers? <laughs> 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 He's like, like you? He's like you? Disrespecting me. That's what he said. Up. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> he said, hey, man, you can't put no white dude on hey, me. Hey, hey, <laughs> that is straight disrespect. <laughs> oh, right? my God, bro. He said, don't put no oh, white dude shit. on me. So check this out. So the next year we come back, uh -huh. I said, I got somebody for your ass, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, who you got? I said, Rob. <laughs> 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 he said, okay. He, he's a little better. Mm. He said, but don't ever put no white dude on me mm. because that is disrespectful. Mm. Different breed, bro. Larry. Like, okay. Patrick Ewing, a New York Knicks legend and one of the best. It's good to hear like stories of like Larry Bird like that because you, you can see, you can hear like he have like a cool layback like side to him. He not like stuck up or whatnot. Like, you know, he's, he's in tune with shit. Centuries of all time is close friends with Larry Bird and has voiced admiration for Bird's skills, basketball knowledge, and leadership on multiple occasions. And he told people that Larry Bird's trash talking was the real deal. He talked trash uh, against us, talked trash with every uh, against everyone else. But you know the, the the difference is he could back it up. He could back it up. You know I remember, mm -hmm. you know like I was saying, uh, growing up in Boston, people all used to always talking about that he can't jump, he can't do this, he can't do that. And, you know, a lot of my friends was like that, you know. So, I, you know, I got to the league, I called all my friends back up. I said, you know, all that trash that you were talking, you need to squash all that. This, this man is great. Changing he, he the game. Can, whatever you were saying for a man who can't jump, he, he'll demo he can demo he's, he's demolishing everybody. Here are three legends, Dr. J, Kevin McHale, and Bill Walton, explaining Bird's impact on the game and his mindset when playing. Pay attention to McHale's story especially because it shows oh, what oh. Bird will do when the game is on the line and he's not having the best night. You know, this guy, I think he was born to pay, play basketball. Seeing him come in and, and making the adjustment early, taking a team that had won 20 games the year before, and you know, the next year, I mean, you know, they're 40 plus, and the next Damn, year, 60, 60 plus. Nothing bothered him. Unbelievable competitor, great hands, great vision, great the feel fake. for the game. And just, you know, could go out every single night and just play at an unbelievably high level. Didn't have to shoot the ball really well to have a good game because he did so many different things. Come out, I'm inbounding the ball. Larry, we're walk we, we drop a play, we're walking out there. Larry says, nah, I'm going to shoot a three. I'm, I'm going to win it right here. And I'm like, Larry, no, 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 no. <laughs> shoot, just, just make it two. We're just, just going to overtime. I'm thinking, my God, you haven't made a shot all game long. Don't do that now. So we walk over there. and, 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 and See, Larry you don't do that to a player, bro. If you're feeling that confident, just let him have his moment, bro. You got, sometimes you just got to, like, trust your players, bro. He watched by the bench. That's pretty a player of his caliber. Bench, he said, Nah, I'm fixing to jump out here, bust this play, and knock a three down on you and go home. And um, the bench looks at him and stuff. So Larry busts the play, jumps out, gets the ball on, right, you know, kind of in front of their bench at three-point line, shoots it, 
As he lets it go, he looks at the bench and said, told you so, and starts running to the locker room. <laughs> See, now in today's game, that wouldn't even be a valid. That wouldn't even be valid. Cause that's point one, point zero one on the clock, bro. Like, there's no way you're getting that off. There's no way the replay center gonna let that happen. But that's a good As shot. He though. lets it go. He looks at the bench and said, "Told you so," and starts running to the locker room. <laughs> Ball rips through. We win by one. So bad, and man. the bench, the bench coaches Clutch. have this. El Bianchi's got this look on his face, like, like honestly, like he's seen a ghost. He's just sitting there. And I walk by and I go, does it all the time. And I'll be like, he just shakes his head. But that was classic Larry, a will to win, unbelievable amount of confidence. But the best thing was he had no idea what I was thinking in my mind. Like, am I really going to throw it to him? He hasn't made a shot all the fourth quarter. And by, he ran in, and by the time I got in there, he had already popped a beer. He had a beer in his Big cigar. And, was laughing. <laughs> and I just walked up to him and gave him a hug and said, man, you are something. Nobody worked as hard as Larry. He was the first guy there. He was the last guy to leave. He wore that body out with the jumpers and the running and the movement and the, and the concentration and the focus and the discipline and the sacrifice. He had it all. He wanted the last. That's what it takes to be him. great, bro. He to wanted be, the focus you know, and he to be wanted elite. that ball. And if it ever got to the point where Casey Jones, a coach who we just loved and would do anything for, in case he would ever call somebody else's play, Larry would just say, no, no, no. I'm, I'm shooting this ball. And, and <laughs> Two seconds on the shot clock. Bird wants a three out of it. He gets it. I mean, let's be honest. Are you going to tell Larry Bird no? No, right? Exactly. <laughs> Next, we have two NBA legends who are in my top five of all time, Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They both said Larry Bird was the best guy they played against. And listen to how they describe Bird's game. You can tell that it was war when you're getting ready to play against that man. And you had to be on your A game at all times. Um, the best guy I played against might have been, uh, you know, Larry Bird. Somewhere yeah. like that. How good was Michael Bird? Jordan. People, I don't think people, people, people don't look at him and think, yeah, oh, he's a white guy, he's, slow he's, guy. The chubby white guy, he wore <laughs> us out, man. You know? No, did he? he just, this was, this muscle here, the one between his ears, Yeah, that was his best, you know, because he, he made the three points Damn. and he had assists and rebounded, steals. He was always at the right place at the right time. On the court, you know, one of the great players. Yeah, adjustments I, you know, I, he I makes. Had the opportunity to play against. There's nobody that I ever played against that I love and respected more than Larry Bird. The man, ah. listen, you couldn't give him an inch, or he would just shoot it right in your face. He Damn. was dominant at both ends of the court, and so uh, Larry Bird made me a better player, and I think I made him a better player, and together we made the NBA better. And now we have the last two legends on this list, John Stockton and Charles Barkley. They both shared hilarious trash talking stories when they went against Bird. And you get to see Charles explain what exactly made NBA players fear him in the game. Well, he's, he's, the only, he's the only guy that <laughs> came into Utah when I was a young player. fear him in the game. Well, he's, he's, the only, he's the only guy. Damn, who said Larry Bird can't jump? Exactly made NBA players fear him. Oh, hell? Well, he's, he's, only, he's the only guy <laughs> that came into Utah when I was a young player and said, I, I think I'm going to have 43 tonight. Told our whole team that on the bench, and he came in and had 43 tonight. So, um, Damn. I don't know. I, I have to give the nod to Larry at this one. Don't feel bad because I was the tiebreaker on the on the poll question, and I picked Larry Legend as well. So, I'm, I'm with the same <laughs> company. So. God, Bird talked trash to everybody. <laughs> But didn't he, did, did he get to a point where he I, had I, respect I, I, for I, him? I always tell this, people, this story about Larry Bird. I remember him, he was cursing under his breath. And I asked him, I said, Larry, what's going on with you? He says, you guys are being disrespectful to me. And I says, what are you talking about? He says, you guys are putting a white guy on me. <laughs> That's disrespectful. Wait, who's oh the white God. guy you put I, on him? I can't remember who it was. I just started laughing. I had no comeback. He says, he says it's disrespectful when y'all put a white guy on me. And I'm sitting there like, I'm laughing in the middle of a game. Like, Larry beat you with his will <laughs> and his mind. But he didn't have the athletic ability 
that Kobe and Michael and LeBron and those guys had. Thanks. Larry wills himself and his team to win. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and show everyone this if they're sleeping on how good Larry Bird was. Thanks, bro. Share my video. Because there are NBA legends that can vouch. So comment down below your favorite Bird story and until next time. Yo, I hope you guys enjoy. As usual, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the next one. I appreciate you.